Hey guys, welcome to Knocked Up and Broke. My name is Vanessa. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm a first time mommy. Uh, I have a seven month old son. And um, this is just, if you're here, then you've, you've been following my journey. If you've never been here before, well, this is just about my motherhood journey. Um, telling you my story and just sharing tips and trying to be as helpful as I can. So for today, we're just going to get straight into it and talk about my labor story. I gave birth on May 15th, 2018. I know many people will be like, yeah, that was my, the happiest day of my life. It was a, I can't say it was the happiest. I'd say it was the most confusing day of my life and the most scariest um, experience that I've ever had in my whole entire life. But... At the same time, it's just when I look back at it, like seven months ago that I gave birth and I'm just like, oh my God, I went through so much and I'm just really proud of that journey. Um, most people know that before you give birth, if you're pregnant and you're watching this, then you must have been told that labor is going to be excruciating. Labor is going to be the worst experience in your life. And the thing is, I don't tell you that because that's a fact, like you'll go through it, but there's nothing anyone can tell you that can prepare you for labor just because of how gruesome it actually is. I had really tried to prepare myself mentally, emotionally, physically. I had read so much online. I'd watched so much online. Then I came to realize that everyone's experience is so different and they are similar but different and you know it all depends on you you might think you don't have a high tolerance for pain i thought that i didn't have a high tolerance for pain until that day came and i was like oh my god but now when i look at it i'm like i can't believe that i went through all that by myself and that my body was able to just go through that they say that giving birth is the equivalent of your bones breaking one by one i think it's worse than that that's just my opinion if you've ever had a bone broken or even just hit yourself even the corner of the like the bed or something mm. multiply by a trillion and i'm not exaggerating that was my personal experience other people give birth really fast for other people it's just um they just choose to go for a cs and this is just for people who if you, whatever the case whether you decided a cs or whatever i'm just going to tell you my labor story and just how it went down so i was meant to give birth around that time but i decided to be induced because at the time the doctor was like there's really no point of waiting because if you're already overdue or you're already having issues you're so tired then you might as well just get um, induced and so i was like okay fine there's no point of waiting it's okay so on may 15th actually no what am i saying at may 15th may 13th i checked into coptic hospital they tell you to go really early, so we were there by 7.30 uh, with my friend Anne. And, you know, they were like, oh yeah, so you just go, you go in, you check in, and they really prefer just doing your induction really early. For those who don't know what an induction is or what in, it means to be induced, it's um, oxytocin, like a hormone or something that usually contracts your uterus and just pushes you to give birth, basically. So in Coptic Hospital, they start with a pessary. The pessary is like a kadawa they put up, you know, your vagina. And they put it up, and that was the first one they put. And I remember they put it at about 9 a.m. That was on May 13th. It was on a Monday. So they put the first one. I didn't feel anything for some time. And funny enough, during my labor, like I'd carried my laptop. I thought that I'd be there, you know ready to watch movies and all that stuff but you just can't do anything because you're just like i'm really waiting to feel this pain that's not coming just yet so i waited at around um one two o'clock i started feeling like feeling eh, feeling hmm. I started feeling cramps so i started feeling these cramps and i was like hey this is what it means to actually be in labor you know it's your first time but it felt like menstrual cramps so I was like, okay, this is not as bad because my period's pain, my period pain is actually really bad. So I was like, maybe it's just that and people just exaggerate. That was me. Then when I was walking at the, and you know, they were telling me, keep walking. The nurses kept telling me, keep walking because walking will just help you turn your baby. By the way, fun fact, my baby had not turned position until like last minute. I really had to do a lot of walking because before he was transverse, which means that he was lying across 
and I had to make sure that he turned and I was using a bouncing ball. I had this big bouncing ball where I was just bouncing a lot before I gave birth so that he could engage. So yeah, but that's a story for another day. So at least by then he had already engaged, his head was already facing down. Then um at around six the doctor came now from nine to six that's another thing about coptic hospital they really because they're really understaffed the doctors really take time to come and check up on you they're like four uh obstetricians and they come in rounds and i guess they're really overwhelmed i'm not blaming anyone but they did their best they could so they came the doctor came a really nice egyptian doctor came and he said um let me check so i was like how are you gonna check if like um actually you know dilated so they do a ve a vaginal examination a vaginal examination is putting two fingers up your vagina and seeing if your cervix has opened so they checked and they're like hey your cervix has not opened by the way that vaginal examination is one of the most intrusive and very uncomfortable experience especially when you're going through pain because i'd already started contracting so i was already in pain and i'm like wow this is a lot so he put a second pessary Second pessary was to accelerate it. Now, I remember a friend of mine who also went through the same experience, but by the first pessary, she dilated in like five hours. So remember, people are different. So put the pessary and I started contracting. I was in so much pain. I swear, guys, it's like literally it's like fire in your system, just biting every part of you, firing. And it's like you're literally in hell. And I just I, I can't even explain anyway so i was contracting they come i've dilated like two centimeters and you're supposed to dilate 10 10 centimeters but dilating means your cervix is opening the baby is almost there mimi i had reached nowhere it reached a point where i was just like you know what i just want to get a cs but luckily you know my family members and people my friends are just like nope you cannot have a cs you just push on let's see because you know a cs is obviously a lot more pricey but apart from that I had been told that a natural bath it would be faster to heal from so I was you know still going through but at that time because you're in so much pain you're just like I don't care I don't care about that like I'm not gonna like just go take me to theater anyway so now that's now now May 13th 6 p.m. from 9 a.m. 6 p.m. dilated two centimeters May 14th came there I was champion marching on walking trying to go up and down the corridor and while i'm there you're seeing mamas who entered after you they were actually admitted after you and they've already given birth and they're holding their babies and they're so happy you on the other hand you're just there they'd come the nurses come they check the the baby they see the heart rate your heart rate and at least at no point my baby was not uh, in distress or anything but i was just getting really tired and again, bouncing on the ball, trying to get the baby to come down. It's like, I'm not coming today. I'm not coming. And I'm just like, what? Sometimes I just look at him right now and he's sometimes really stubborn. And I'm like, Amma, this is what it was. You're just stubborn. But um, yeah, anyways. So after that, May 14th went by and now things were getting heated. Like, my family were like they were there they're like okay now listen this girl needs to be moved to another hospital this is nonsense why isn't she giving birth and for me i was in so much pain like i was just literally i would black out like i would just black out uh, for like two minutes i would just disappear it's like i'm in another world and then i come back when the pain just lifts you back up from your blacking out and it's like it slaps you across the face and it's like wake up you know that pain it's like if it had a name it would just be the devil himself it's like the devil would wake up and just slap me and wake up and i'll just be so scared and i'd sweat like i had night chills anyway so at about um, midnight after a lot of pushing the doctor finally agreed to put me on a drip they wanted to put a third pessary now at that point we were just like no way you're not going to put another uh pessary like up my vagina which i remember is like a pill that they insert i was just like nope 
just give me the drip the final drip in fact my shosho kept saying why are you even putting her why are you giving her pessaries kitambo we just used to put the induction drip and go straight into labor but this one's their policy is that like they just don't go straight to the drip so now the drip came and the drip is now the mother of all pain contractions is just literally when they started with the pessary it, at least i had like a five minute break right now when that that thing that drip they put that magi first of all the, the nurse had put it vibaya luckily i had a male nurse friend who was really good to me i just texted him i was like yo i'm in so much pain but i don't know why this induction drip is not working thank god he was actually on duty that night and he came and he was like, I hey, will I still actually have like a hole here. And he came, he put it nicely. And now I'm telling you that the wa was shad. It was shad. My contractions were like this going chup, 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 quick steps. And in about 30 minutes, like I was taken to the labor ward. And luckily, at least in Coptic, the labor ward is just like two beds. The two beds, you get in there real quick. Um, there was no one else because it was like at midnight and I was so like so tired and I was there grabbing like I couldn't they're like try and walk I'm like try and walk where like I couldn't move you guys I was just like this the whole time I was like <gasps> like I'm not even exaggerating that this is even under under I'm underrating it um and it was so painful I couldn't stand up I couldn't do anything in a few minutes, the nurse came to check if I had dilated, and guess what? I had dilated, and I was actually six centimeters from two centimeters to six centimeters really fast. In just a few, I remember I was being asked, Do you feel like pushing? and I kept wondering, What does that even mean? Then I knew what that meant in a few minutes. It didn't even take long, everything took 30 minutes literally to the time I went into labor. And I did feel like pushing. I felt an urge to push and I couldn't stop it. So the nurse was like, I was like, ah, like the movies, guys, like the movies. I was just like, ah, ah. And the nurse is like, oh my God. I'm like, oops, in a push. So I had, they had to lift me. I walked slowly to the delivery room, went to the delivery room. And while I was there, I just like my legs were open and I was just like please usi push and go ja. I didn't like the way the nurses were so they were so relaxed. They were just like apana go ja usi push like it's something you can just hold. They like daktaria na ingia but unaza and then another one was like no unaza anza ku push. I'm like uni push alafu mtoto wangu wangu kachini. So the doctor came. He was a really nice um doctor and older doctor i'm not saying younger doctors are bad but i mean i knew the doctor and i know that like he was a really good guy so he came and he was just like okay push for me that was not a problem for me pushing was so easy i pushed three times the first time second time and while i was pushing just feel so relieved pushing for me was the easiest part they did an episiotomy as well episiotomy means a cut and you don't feel it when they cut at all in Coptic hospital, they put you under. I don't know about other hospitals, but they put you under while they're stitching. So I was under and I really liked being under because I was so exhausted and so tired. I had my baby cry and he was taken there and just, you know, taken care of. But at that time when I was put under, it was like such a great thing. Like I was away. I dreamt like I was in some place with cotton candy and many other things. I don't know. That drug was amazing let me just say that it was amazing they stitched me didn't feel anything i was numb for some time and yeah but i really liked it guys i really liked it but honestly for me all in all with labor all i can tell you is that you just need to prepare yourself for what you will carry when you go for labor just make sure you have the things that you need to actually carry with you and also your baby stuff but when it comes to pain always have people around you who can make decisions really quickly because while you're in pain you need someone who can at least take the next step should she go for a cs don't just let the doctors decide everything for you ask why should i do this why not because sometimes hospitals actually prolong your labor so that you can go into cs because it's more money for them and it was so close i was so close to getting um 
going into a, a cesarean oh another thing my water did not break naturally my water was broken in hospital like they put some glove thing that has like some two two dots they put under there it's not painful it was not painful for me and they put a mat under i remember they put a mat on the bed and they were like i'll ask them why are you putting a mat and they're like you'll see immediately she put it under like she put her finger in and broke my water the sack or whatever it just kept coming out like it was warm the amniotic fluid i'm guessing and i say like that till like 15th now 12 22 is when my son was born and it was just coming out in some weird liquid brownish liquid came out and i still remember it i was like yuck and the doctor was just like it's yours i'm like i don't care what's that anyways guys labor is not a beautiful thing i'm not here to lie to you it was not a beautiful experience for me but it really taught me a lot about myself that i can actually after that like i feel like i've been feeling more like a boss bitch like i went through that i carried a whole child gave birth and a lot of pain and even if you don't have to go through a lot of pain you still carried a whole child and you brought a living person into this world and and still ongoing with very many other challenges which we'll discuss in the next very many episodes of knocked up and broke so remember to subscribe remember to like remember to leave your comments what was your experience with your labor story just tell me hit me up um i'll talk about the other labor stuff on my instagram just like types of people you don't even want to have in your labor room um and then i'll also have a part two for this just like healing episiotomy postpartum body and thank you so much for watching and see you next time